Good afternoon. I am Lillian Merja. Today is the second Sunday of Advent. At this time, if you have a cell phone, please silence it or turn it off. If during the liturgy, children need to use the restroom, we ask that they be accompanied by an adult. We extend a warm welcome to those of you who are visitors. The celebrant for this mass will be Father Vaughn. In this gathering, we have been asked to remember Charles Hudson. Please wear your mask during mass, except when you receive communion. At the entrances of the church, you will find collection baskets for our church offerings. Please place both your offertory in the baskets and on your way out of mass. Please stand. O people of Zion, behold, the Lord will come to save the nations, and the Lord will make the glory of his voice heard in the joy of your heart. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy, and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that your service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain. The rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up onto the high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord.
Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. I will hear what God proclaims, the Lord, for he proclaims peace to his people. Near indeed is his salvation toward those who fear him, glory dwelling in our land. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Kindness and truth shall meet, justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and prepare the way of his stand. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise as some regard delay, but he is patient with you, not wishing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be, conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Straight his pass, 
all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey. And this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. So I've been told that the roads are pretty bad, so I'm going to... Uh, do a somewhat shorter homily than I was planning. And you're saying, oh good, a short homily. I didn't say short, I said shorter. Um, But uh, as we remember, as I said last week, about where is my relationship with God, despite what the movie Love Story tells us, love does mean saying I'm sorry to those whom we love. And uh, where am I in my relationship with God? Do I need confession? Uh, Really is coming up this week in my mind because of uh, how John the Baptist is going out for that repentance of sins. So I was planning on going through all the Ten Commandments and really building on what does this look like in our lives and doing an examination of conscience. I will do it, but in a much more abbreviated manner than I was planning. So... My apologies for that, but I also realize uh, the roads, we don't want people too, too much on the roads in uh, the dark. But ultimately what this is, is looking for God's mercy and forgiveness. This word repent of changing our lives. And so when we look at the Ten Commandments, the first three are focused on love of God. The last seven are focused on Love of God indirectly through love of neighbor. And so the first three, I am the Lord your God, you shall have no other gods beside me. Shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain and keep holy the Sabbath. These three things about honoring God, putting him first in our lives. And so we have to look at our lives and saying, have I put God first? A few things to to ponder over this. What have I put in the place of God? Sometimes we put ourselves where we decide that we are going to be able to say, like the world tells us to do, that what I say is right and wrong is right and wrong for me, as opposed to what God says is right and wrong. And so we have to look and say, am I going after things which I think are okay, but God has said through his word, through his church, which are not. For instance, false spiritualities, Reiki, yoga, tarot cards, fortune tellers, mediums, Wicca, New Age. These offend God and they they are doorways to evil. Do we let ourselves go into those areas? Do we honor God's name? Do we avoid unnecessary work on, on the Sabbath, on Sunday? Then looking at love of neighbor, honoring parents. The fourth commandment. Obviously, this means our parents, but other proper authority. And we look at, do we have maybe a spirit of rebellion? 
going against what proper authority is telling us to do. Well, that's not what I want to do, so I'm going to do it my way. Well, that's going against this fourth commandment. Obviously, there are times when we do have to fight against unjust laws. But do we have that automatic response of, if it's not what I think is right, therefore I will fight against it in the spirit of rebellion? Fifth commandment, you shall not kill. Certainly it looks at murder, but everything is about the sacred dignity of human life. Do we, do we go against that through abortion, euthanasia, suicide? Do we support embryonic research? You know, as we look at, for instance, the vaccines coming out, some of them, yes, are, are done in morally correct ways, but some are made with the cells of dead babies. We need to be aware of that. If we do decide that we're going to get a vaccine for COVID-19, are we taking something that's morally okay? Or are we building our health on dead babies? This, like I said, I'm doing this quickly. I wanted to get a little bit more detailed, but we're going to have to do this quickly. With the Sixth Commandment, adultery, looking at our sexual sin, not just adultery, but fornication and self-abuse, contraception, sterilization, in vitro fertilization, any manner of our sexual relationship that's not open both to bonding and to babies within the context of marriage. Seventh commandment, stealing. Do I take things that don't belong to me, including time from work by my wasting time maybe on social media or other things? Eighth commandment, lying. Shall not commit, uh, not gossiping, not exaggerating, things like that. Ninth and tenth commandments have to do with the mind, not just the action, our desires. So where the sixth commandment is about sexual sin, the ninth commandment is about uh, lust. Where the seventh commandment is about stealing, the tenth commandment is about undue desire for the things of others. And so we look at these things and say, for instance, with lust, it's that making someone else an object for my own pleasure. Pornography, other, other ways of doing that. And then uh, with undue desire with the Tenth Commandment for other people's stuff, it's an ingratitude. I'm ungrateful for the things that God has given me, and I want more or different. So as we continue through Advent and are looking at how God is calling us to his heart, calling us to deeper relationship, we do have to break free from sin. So let us ask God for that grace to repent, to turn away from sin, be faithful to the gospel, and truly to allow him to convict us of those areas of our lives which go against his very heart, and to receive his great mercy through the grace of the sacrament of reconciliation. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. 
I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we have prepared our hearts and our lives for the day of the Lord's coming, let us call to mind our needs and the needs of the world around us. For the church that we may make straight the Lord's paths, allowing his presence to permeate our lives and the lives of people around the world, especially those desperate for comfort and hope, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, that they may listen to the voices crying out in the desert, the voices of those who hunger and thirst for sustenance, justice, and peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those struggling to make their way out of the rugged lands and rough countries, immigrants, refugees, and those seeking asylum, that they may find strength and confidence in their faith as Isaiah and the, ex and the exiles from Jerusalem did centuries ago. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those especially chosen by Christ to make clear the way of the Lord in their hearts and the hearts of his people as priests, deacons, brothers, and sisters, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all married couples, that they continue to live their vocation of love as an example to their families and to the world of God's faithful, fruitful, and lasting love, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of Jason, Richard, Doris Hull, and Anthony Marino, and all who have died recently, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Charles Hudson, and for all our beloved deceased, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers of this assembly and for all the prayers written in our parish book of intercessions, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord of all, you call us to repentance, not just because we have sinned, but because you wish that we should all live. Grant us the strength to seek forgiveness as you listen to the prayers we make through the one whose coming we long for, Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, 
for he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 
the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, arise and stand upon the heights, and behold the joy which comes to you from God.
Let us pray. Replenish by the food of spiritual nourishment. We humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Reminder, please leave your kneeler down as you're leaving your pew so we know where to sanitize. Um, The Advent Cluster Penance Service, as of right now, is being held tomorrow afternoon at 2 p.m. over at Mary Queen of Peace in Salem. You might want to just pay attention to what's happening with the storm and see. I'm not sure how we'll let people know if that's going to be canceled or not. This Tuesday, December 8th, is a holy day. Uh, It's the Immaculate Conception, and so we have Masses at 8 a.m., 10 a.m., and 7 p.m. That being said, with all that going on, we are still within uh, the uh, uh, time when it is not required to go to Mass because of the pandemic. However, again, uh, we do have Masses for this Holy Day. And then after each of those Masses, for those of you who've been preparing yourself to, uh, for the consecration to Jesus through Mary, uh, we'll be doing the consecration prayers as a group if you'd like to join us uh, after each of those Masses. Please help us spread the word about a new seminary and pin slash sticker fundraiser. Uh, as you know, the cost of edu- educating and forming our seminarians is $500,000 a year, or about $100 per seminarian per day. And because we weren't able to have our fall um, fundraiser as we did last year, they've decided to sell uh, 20 f- or after if you give a $25 donation to the vocation department, they'll give you a vocation seminarian pin. And you can check the bulletin for more information. Christmas tags from the Good Neighbor Fund are hanging downstairs in the hallway of the Knights of, across from the Knights of Columbus Hall. If you are attending one of our Christmas Masses, we do ask that you sign up ahead of time. If you don't sign up ahead of time, you may not be able to get in. So please contact the parish offices. Um, that being said, as, as I mentioned, the dispensation for Sunday Mass is still in place, and the bishop wants us to be reminding you, if you are sick, stay at home, please. Uh, don't, it's good to be generous, it's good to share, but not your, your germs. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. The prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the other evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen.